Hi, George Diamond here today. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, another video, another calculus video. Let me put my orange down and we'll get started. I got on my red shirt today, so this is my good luck shirt. We're ready to get, we're ready to go. Now we're continuing our our our, our look at what is section 4.4 in our textbook. This is the first and second fundamental theorems of calculus. So we've already talked about each of those a little bit. Now today we're going to look at some, basically some applications involving uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus. And one of these applications is something called the net change theorem. <clears throat> now in our textbook, this is section 4.4. We use the Larson text. Now what I'm going to look at in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the net change theorem. And we'll look at just a couple examples. So uh, hopefully you already know, uh, have looked at the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus, where you can evaluate a definite integral by finding your antiderivative and substituting in your upper bound and your lower bound. So I'm assuming that you've already looked at the, you already know how to evaluate a definite integral, because this is an application of that type of evaluation. Now this is called the, uh, something called the net change theorem. And what the net change, the net change theorem uh, basically indicates is that so the uh, definite integral of a rate of change. So when you integrate a rate of change quantity, described as f prime x of x, so capital F prime f x of x, gives the total change. So what we call the net change in that quantity on the interval from a to b. Now the interval from a to b, this would be t1 t2. Right, so on the interval from A to B. Now, usually described like this. Now, our textbook describes it as the integral from A to B. F prime x of x dx. Uh, you're basically evaluating this definite integral. And uh, F prime x of x is your rate. Okay, once again, this will give us F prime, uh, F, uh, capital F of B minus capital F of A, which describes the net change over that time interval. So this will describe our net change. Okay, some textbooks you see it written indicated like this. So T1, T2. T1 is your lower bound. T2 is going to be your upper bound. And you're integrating a rate, which gives you the capital F at T1. Actually, T, this should be T2 and T1. So let me erase that. So T2 and T1. Right, so make that change. And uh, once again, this will give us our net change over a particular time interval. Now what we're going to get today is, uh, is two examples. Uh, these are, you know, these net change problems are pretty much all set up the same way, uh, but you do have to use that little skills uh, uh, as far as evaluating the definite integral. So let's take a look at our first example. Let me get this erased here real quick, and then we'll uh, pull up our first problem. And uh, so we're only going to look at two problems, and uh, they're pretty much set up the, the same way to these net change problems. So let me get this erased. Go. I guess it's going to erase all right. Okay, so just about got it. Okay, so let's pull up our first problem. I've got it uh, on another board here, so let's take a look at it. All right, it's problem number one. Now, this problem uh, is about uh, water flowing into a storage tank. Now, this problem says water flows into a storage tank at a rate of 100 or 180 plus 3t liters per minute. The liters per minute the indicates right there we're working with a rate, right? Uh, where uh, where t is between zero and 60, it says find the uh, amount of water that flows into the tank during the first 20 minutes. So we're looking for the net change over 20 minutes. So water flowing into the tank. How much water is flowing into the tank over 20 minutes? Now, with this uh, now start off. We need to set up our definite integral. So uh, during the first 20 minutes, you're talking about from t equals 0 to t equals 20. Right? So this will be t1, and that'll be t2. So as we set up our definite interval, we'll set it up 0 to 20. Right? Of our rate function, which is 180, plus 3t dt. So this is our definite integral. This is our, our, our net change integral. Uh, so that we set up our, our integral here with this matter of finding our antiderivative, substituting our upper bound minus our lower bound, and this will give us our net change. Uh, now once again, make sure you have, your, uh, have the problem down because I'm going to take this problem off, uh, set this problem off in just a minute here. So if you don't have it copied down and you need it, go ahead and uh, get it copied down quickly. 
Now, start us off, let's find our antiderivative. We have an antiderivative of 180. is 180t plus. Now, the antiderivative of 3t would be 3 times t squared over 2. And once again, this will be from, from 0 to 20. All right, so 0 to 20. Now, let's take the upper bound, substitute the upper bound minus the lower bound, and uh, I want to set this off so we have a little bit more room. That's to work. Right. Now, substituting the upper bound minus the lower bound now, this would be 180 times 20 plus 3 halves times 20 squared minus 180 times 0 plus 3 halves times 0 squared. Right. Now, this here is all zero, so it's all zero. Uh, so as we evaluate this, 180 times 20 gives us 3,600. So it gives us 3,600. Okay, plus 3 halves times 20 squared would be 400, would be 2, would be 600. And adding these together will give us 4,200. So 4,200, now we're looking at the net change. This is the amount of water now that has flowed into the tank over the first 20 minutes, so that'd be 4,200 liters. Right, so that's the amount of water that has flown into the, or that has, that has gone into the tank or flowed into the tank over the first 20 minutes, from t equals zero to t equals 20. That's the amount of water that's flown into the tank. So a simple net change problem. You just have to make sure you know how to evaluate the definite integral correctly. Right, let's take a look at another problem. So we'll do one more. Let's erase this. Okay, let's see now. Now, problem number two. Okay, let's go ahead and bring this one up again. And uh, let's see what this one says. All right. All right, this is problem number two. Now, it says, uh, at 1 p.m., water begins leaking into a tank at a rate of 4 plus 0.75 T. Right, gallons per hour. So this is in gallons per hour. Uh, how much water is lost from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m.? Okay, what about from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m.? Right, so how much water is lost over uh, each of those time periods? All right, so from, uh, from uh, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. and then from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. So, uh, so let's see now, as we look at our, our time values now, so T1, now uh, remember now, 1 and 4, uh, that's what time it is. Right? So that would be T equals 0 right, at the beginning. Uh, and then from 1 to 3, we, well, that would be of our 3-hour period. So T1 would be 0, T2 would be 3. So as we set up our interval now, this would be the integral from 0 to 3. And not from 1 to 4. 1 to 4 is just time. This is what time it starts to, uh, uh, starts to leak, and that's from 1 to 4. So it starts leaking at 4 and then at 1 o'clock, and then uh, we want to determine how much water has leaked from the tank from 1 to 4. And uh, our function now, our, uh, our, our function would be 4 plus 0.75t dt. All right, so we got our function set up. Now, if you kind of think about this for a minute, if you look at your function, okay, your, your rate function is in gallons per hour. So this here is in gallons per hour. Now, dt is a small increment in time. So dt is your time increment. That's in hours also. So within the integral, kind of think of it like this. The, the hours here are going to cancel out, and that's going to give us the number of gallons. So when you look at your integral, within the integral, the integral is a rate. So you get gallons per hour for your rate. dt is in hours, so the hours are going to cancel, giving us the number of gallons. So it gives us the net change. So when you kind of think of your, your integral like this, and you can kind of see how the units kind of cancel out uh, within the interval. So, uh, first thing we want to do, let's see if we can find our antiderivative. Now, the antiderivative 4 would be 4t uh, plus, so let's see, plus, uh, this would be 0 0.75 times t squared over 2, and this will be from 0 to 3. So this would be from 0 to 3. So let's see what we get. Uh, substituting the upper bound minus the lower bound. Now so we'll end up here with uh, 4 times 3 
less than 0 0.75 divided by 2 uh, times, let's see, that's to be t squared, so it's to be uh, 0.75 divided by 2 times 3 squared minus, and the rest of this should be 0, so more times 0 plus 0 0.75 times 2 times 0 squared, and this is all 0 here. Okay, so from uh, 3 to 0. Now, as we evaluate this, I'll just go ahead and move on. Uh, so we end up with 12 plus, so 12 plus 3.375. And this will simplify to 15.375. So 15.375. Now, that is in gallons of water. All right, so leaking from the tank. So water begins leaking from the tank. Uh, so uh, over the three-hour period, this is how much water has been leaking from the tank. So about a little over 15 gallons of water has been lost over during the first three uh, during the first three hours as it leaks from the tank. Now also Part B says, what about from 4 to 7 p.m.? Right, so what about from 4 to 7 p.m.? Now we said this integral up from 0 to 3. Now the next integral would be the next three-hour time period. So the next integral, right, so do Part B. We set up part B. Our integral will go for our lower bound will be 3 and our upper bound will be 6. All right, so we got it already set up, so it would be from 3 to 6 this time as we evaluate our, our definite integral from, from hour 3 to hour 6. And uh, let's see what we did this time. So you would think if, if, it's, uh, if the water is leaking from the tank uh, at a constant rate, uh, you know, it should be 15, uh, you know, 15.375 gallons again. So let's see if it is. Uh, so let's see what we get. So let me erase this. Now we've got our antiderivative, and this will be from, change our upper and lower bounds again. And this will be 3 to 6. Right. Substituting the upper bound minus the lower bound now, we'll have 4 times 6 plus 0 0.75 divided by 2 times 6 squared minus the lower bound, which is 4 times 3 plus 0 0.75 times 2 times 3 squared. Right? Now, to make things move along a little bit faster, I'm going to go ahead and I already have the answers here uh, already calculated. Now we end up with 37.5. It's be 37.5 minus. Uh, as we substituting, substituting 3 in now gives us uh, uh, 15.375. Uh, so 15.375. And let's see, so be minus, let's be 37.5 minus 15.375, which simplifies to 22.125 gallons. Now, you notice, uh, you know, uh, over the, the second three hour period that the water is leaking from the from the tank, uh, you know, uh, the, actually the amount of water has, has increased, right? So the, the leak is getting worse and worse, uh, apparently, as, as time goes along. So during the first three hours, uh, we leaked about what, a little over 15 gallons, and then during the second three-hour period, we've leaked over, over 22 gallons of water now. So the leak is getting worse, so the rate of, of, of the, the, so the, rate of, uh, the water uh, uh, leaking from the, uh, from the uh, and the tank has actually increased. So it's 22.125 now for the second three-hour time period. So the leak's getting worse here with this particular uh, uh, tank. All right, so hopefully you felt, uh, you know, hopefully you know a little bit more about the, uh, the, uh, so the, so you know a little bit more about the net change theorem. All right, so we're looking at here. So how to calculate net change. Uh, got, a lot of times you got to set your own integral up. So just be careful as you set it up. Make sure you get the correct lower bound and the correct upper bound. And then from that, just a matter of evaluating your definite integral.